The grievous miracle manifested itself in many different ways as it blessed the religious zealots of Custodia. Some were twisted into grotesque creatures, and others into beings with immense power. Even death itself was not enough to keep one from the cruel clutches of the miracle. Perpetua was one such soul, for even after her untimely demise, her blessing allowed her essence to remain in the realm of the living. In life, she served alongside her sibling Esdras of the Anointed Legion and carried out the will of His Holiness Escobar. Above her duty to the church, Perpetua's bond with her beloved brother took priority over all else. In death, she would protect him and offer encouragement as he prepared for an imminent encounter with a heretic that threatened the very foundation of the Mother of Mothers Church. However, this form was simply a miraculous lie, a shell that wore her face and armor but had nothing of her free will. Perpetua held a high station among the anointed legion and donned the telltale heavy armor and crimson wrappings. These red bindings had been blessed by His Holiness Escobar and had unique properties that allowed the bearers to harness the power of lightning, a trait shared by nearly all warriors of the legion. In her newly blessed form, the wrappings had formed into angelic wings that gave her the power of flight. Perpetua and the Penitent One crossed swords in the Mountains of Endless Dusk, but this would not be the last time they met. Fortunately, due to the Penitent One's sheer amount of faith, Perpetua was able to reach out to him from her sepulcher and reveal hidden truths about the enigmatic High Wills. From the other side of the dream, she had seen the truth and sought to aid the Penitent One in his pilgrimage. She provided him an incomplete scapular so that during his inevitable encounter with Esdras, he would recognize her token and the two would form a truce. Perpetua was the first to notice that something was awry with the Supreme Trinity and noticed a crack in their omniscience. From her final resting place, hidden away in the Echoes of Salt, she was able to relay a message that would go unnoticed by the High Wills long enough to allow for the Penitent One to reach the traitor, obtain the true heart of Mea Culpa, and free Cristanza from the shackles that blindly bound her to the false gods. Without her aid, this outcome would not have been possible and the endless twilight reign of the High Wills would have remained looming over Custodia. If we take a moment to analyze one final detail, it's interesting to note Perpetua's full name is actually Perpetua Ecclesia. The name Perpetua means forever or perpetual. In sociology, the word Ecclesia refers to a religious group that most members of a society belong to, that has a heavy influence in all facets of life, such as the situation we see in Custodia. It's ironic that her very name in life would contrast her most meaningful contributions in death, as she would play a large role in the fall of the church and the religion formed around the grievous miracle. And that's all for this video. Until next time, it's the Inhuman One, signing out.